keep yeah. trying. Uh, the, but the thing is that things like uh, uh, a, a campaign to remove In God We Trust from Coins catches the media's eye. You know, a, a, a campaign to say, well, you know, we shouldn't be offering uh, free kosher lunches at extra expense in public schools doesn't. That's, that's not very dramatic. It's not something mm -hmm. most people will care about. But telling them, oh, we want to change the coin, they, okay. they've got a hook. And, uh, but may, maybe the, uh, the awareness that it, uh, uh, that it raises is, is an awareness of pettiness, though, as we, as we were yes. suggesting a moment ago. Well, yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying, is that the media plays that up. Yes. That the media would rather uh, publicize the trivial efforts of atheists rather than the substantial ones of, of people who are primarily secular. And that's, a, that's a real danger, I think. Yes. I, I in, in, in my Oxford college, uh, whenever I happen to be the senior fellow at dinner, the senior fellow has to say grace, I say grace because I just think it's polite and, and, and because it's, it's a tradition It goes back... Um, rather a lot of centuries, and um, I think it would be petty to refuse to say grace, and I think it would get atheism a bad name. Uh -huh. And I think we've got to be... I mean, let, let, let's link it to the, to the earlier conversation we were having about the right tactics to apply yes. to evolution and, and creation. Um, I think that the genie Scots of this world are wrong to... to to, to be quite so softly, softly as they are on the big issue of the teaching of evolution. But I think that I'm right to be softly, softly on the trivial issues of saying grace uh, at dinner yeah. and singing Christmas carols and, and things like that. Well, let me, let me just say in Eugenie's defense, I don't think she treads softly on the issue of teaching evolution. She's oh, certainly strong. not. No, no. But, but the so idea on, of, on the idea of, of religion. Of uh, religion, she, yes. She's very big on, yes. uh, on I don't know why we keep using her, but poor woman, <laughs> I mean, there are plenty of others. Um, re religion and, and evolution have absolutely no conflict. That, that would be her, her view. Yes. Um, and I don't, ha I don't take that view, so I'm, I'm not an appeaser there, but I might be described as an appeaser with respect to the Ten Commandments in courtrooms, uh, or Gideon Bibles in hotels, or some, something of that sort. Right. Oh, you know, this is, this is kind of useful because now I can say that I'm I'm, I'm more fanatical than Richard Dawkins because I, I I do oppose Ten Commandments in a courtroom because that that sends the wrong okay. Message. I mean, well, let's talk about that. But, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. probably wrong. I, I could be talking. Well, you know, that. the Ten Commandments. Yeah. They have nothing to do with the law. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, the, um, thou but, shalt but, not make any graven image. Thou shalt have no other god before me, etc. Yes, which is yes. particularly ironic since they're putting a huge graven image there in the courtroom. Yes. Uh, well, most of the people who want the Ten Commandments don't know what they consist of anyway. That's right. I mean, they, all they know is thou shalt not kill, which is which bloody is a good obvious. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's sending the wrong message. It's it's sending a message that there's preferential treatment for Christians in the courtroom. And I, okay, that's, I, that's I can important. object to that. That's important. Yeah, so yeah. The courtrooms should be safe places for everybody in society. Yes, So okay. I, I'm all in favor of removing that sort of thing. But yeah, you know, the, the idea of removing in God we trust from the coins, uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried at all about that. Yes. Uh, you know, I, think, I think actually it's been on the coins for rather longer. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was put on the notes right. in, in, the, in the early yes. 50s. But you know, on, on, in the same token, why aren't people complaining about all that Masonic s yes. symbolism on there? You know, that, that strange pyramid. And oh, and the, and the eye. And, yes. And, uh, it's, yeah. uh, you know, I've, I've often thought that you know, what we ought to do to distract the, the Christians is we ought to point out these pagan symbols on the, on the coins and have them go off, or on the dollar bill, and have them go off into the courtrooms chasing those down. Do you think that the uh, creationists have changed their tactics as, as the decades have gone by, been a, having been an observer of the scene? Yeah. Um, they, they have and they haven't. It's, it's, it's the same mindset, it's the same people, but they're more conscious of the fact that they've got to keep the word God out of, out of the literature they're pushing. And, and what you see now is, is more and more efforts to simply cast doubt on evolutionary biology, on biology in general. Mm. Um, so you, you don't... S well, the Dover trial told us a lot, right? Because in the Dover trial, what happened was that you've, you've got the, the high-level operatives of the creationism, people like the Discovery Institute and so forth, 
who are trying to be very, very circumspect and, and quickly backed out of the trial when they saw that it wasn't going to be a, a nice, polite trial. And then you've got the masses underneath, the people who are responsible for pushing these ideas into the classroom. And those people underneath are all very dogmatically religious. So it depends on where you're looking. Mm -hmm. that, that the, the core of the movement is the same, but there's this nice superficial veneer painted over on it to make yes. it look yes. you know, shiny and new, but yes. it's really not. So it's, it's never actually specified that the intelligent designer is the god of the Jews and Christians. Um, and it's well, kind of it's, it's messy, because you, know, you listen to you know, Bill Dembski, for instance, when he goes off and gives these private, private talks at Baptist colleges, mm. he will say that the designer is Jesus. No hesitation. Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> well, not, not, not God, but Jesus. Uh, they're the same thing, right? Well, no. kind of, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I mean, yeah. does he actually use the word the word Jesus for, oh, what did for, he, the, for the designer? And, and I, I I don't have the quote on hand, but okay. there is there is a there is a quote where he's talking about uh, the designer is the logos, and he goes on and talks about Jesus Christ, and mm. um, yeah, it's 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 in there. He he's clearly in that strong Baptist tradition, but. You know, read his books. Yes, when, when, that's right. I mean, they, they, they are very two-faced, these people, yes. aren't they? They'll, they'll present one face to a Christian congregation and another face. Uh, I once had a debate in the Oxford Union. I very seldom do debates. I've completely given them up now. But um, I did take part with John Maynard Smith, uh -huh. a debate with a couple of creationists. Um, there was an old fool called Wilder Smith, who's, who's a nice old chap, but, 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 but an idiot. Um, and he, he's dead now. And another one called Edgar Whitehead, uh -huh. who's, who's a rather unpleasant man. Um, and uh, Edgar Whitehead made his speech in which he was very sort of... He, he, he was... tuned it up to, a, to an Oxford audience. So he was talking about scientific method and philosophy and, and um, uh, probably naturalism and things. It was, it was all philosophical jargon. And you'd never guess that he was a, a young earth creationist uh, who believed in Adam and Eve and, 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 and the, um, eating the apple and so on. Um, so I, I got, got one of his books and it began my speech by reading out passages uh, oh, yes. of, of his book, which completely and utterly belied the whole tone of his speech. And he got absolutely frantic. I mean, he was, he was constantly rising in his seat to try to get the... The, the president of the union to stop me reading his from from his own book using his own words against using him. his own that's words unfair and so um, exactly and that's what they do all the time that's what you just yeah. described uh, Dembski as as doing um, so it's 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 one story for the sophisticated um, intellectuals and quite another story and I think this is a major criticism that I would have of the not the fundamentalists really so much but the the, the bishops and the archbishops and the sophisticated theologians who will, when they're talking to uh, an Oxford or Cambridge senior common room, will say, well, of course we don't believe in miracles or anything like that. I mean, it's all right. the oh, ground yes. of all being and things like that. But then they go to church on Sunday and stand up in the pulpit and talk to the congregation. And theirs will be a very different story. And they'll talk about mm -hmm. uh, changing water into wine and parting of the Red Sea. And they'll say, well, it's kind of symbolic and... and uh, um, It'll be, um, but they don't say it's symbolic. They say, um, what is the real meaning of uh, Adam um, yes. and Eve sewing aprons to conceal their nakedness? And they'll concoct some sort of vaguely poetic, symbolic meaning. But the congregation isn't told that that's what they're doing. The congregation is never disabused of their illusion that Correct. Adam and Eve really existed. It's two-faced again, and it's very, very common among oh, yeah, sophisticated no. theologians. Yeah, th this is a common objection. If I give a talk uh, against religion, there will be somebody in the audience who will rise up and say, but my religion is nothing like that. 